Hey, you see that right there? I be hating when the cops be having their hand on their hip like that. And so you're about to leave or you're going to kill? Got my back. Go. Let's go. How about let's go? Let's go. Stop and get your new car. Let's go. Let's go. You you say you go to jail. Let's go. I can smell. You want to do a DUI right now? Back the up. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, and you back up? No, 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 no. Don't put. Oh, I know who I am. Yo, fake ass. Shut the no up. Come on, let's, you. Come on, let's, you. let's go. Talking crazy to the cops. They the one with the. They the one with the. Yeah. You a bitch, bro. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Keep talking. Get your new car. 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 Get the new car. Get your Get him out of here or I'll take his ass to jail. You. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get in the car. Get in the car. Get in the car. She the only reasonable one. She the only one with her. Get in the car. 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 Get Back hey, up. hey, hey, back up. Sister, man. She grabbed something. What are you doing? What are you doing that for? Back back up. Up. I told her to back up. I told her to back up. Yes, she she did. Is she going to the car? He touched. He, we'll bro. Did she grab something? Come on, bro. We gotta bring it down. Come on, y'all doing that. Bro, come on, bro. You wrong this, dog. Get back. Put him in arrest. Get back. You're under arrest. Why you pushing me? Just back up. you pushing me? Back up. I'm telling you to back up and you're not backing up. Back up. Back up. You want to tase me? You got some tase out of this shit. It's my sister. It's my sister, man. You got some tase out of this shit. Like, like I'm, Do you need to put him down first? Like I'm giving you first. Do you need to put him down for like one that left? I didn't hear you. The one that left. Do you need to put the dog down for him? Well, we got his resistance. Man, see how you got my sister's titties out of this shit? Let's go. I'm just saying, but now ain't go. no let's go. Get your new car. No, but man. This woman right here was the only one that had common sense in the situation, bro. He kind of had some common sense. But then he started letting his emotions get in the way and stuff like that. They could have been left a long time ago and avoided the whole situation. I'm convinced that they need to teach in school. They teach us math. They teach us science. They teach us how to read and write. They need to t teach us how to manage our emotions in school. They need to have classes on how to effectively, what to do in, in, in situations of conflict resolution. Have a simulation of real different real simulated issues or problems and be tested and be graded on how you pass, how you handle certain conflicts responsibly. That should be imp implemented into the education system, into the school system, because that carries over into adulthood. It's not about, it's not just about how competent you, how competent you are at doing a particular job or, or a certain skill. It's always also, if an issue arises, do you have the self-control the strength to be able to calm yourself down and de-escalate the situation. I understand when when when, when tension is high and, and emotions are high and, and things like that is difficult, but that's all a part of discipline. This is what sports teaches you how to not be ruled by your emotions, but sometimes calm yourself down and make the best decisions, not based on emotions. But like what, only 10% of people play on sports teams? So with the other 90%, it's just left up to their emotions. Now, they need, they need to have classes, conflict resolution classes all throughout school from grade, all the grades, bro. We talked for Dude. two weeks straight and you I called me it. every single day, all the time, and all of a sudden it just got dry. Okay. If someone were to ask you, who is this man to you, what would you say? A thing of the past. Like, what I was giving was great, but what he needed was not what I was giving. You know okay. I mean? can, you, can you ask her what I needed? Oh. Does she know what you needed? Not Go ahead and ask her. He would just like a little more affection than I am trying to give. Mm. <laughs> and like said before, I'm, I'm 30 and Charlie's taking too long to fuck, bro. Respectfully, I'm falling back off you. Uh, we were fine. Having a good time. I was cooking food, no problem. We were just chilling, doing whatever. She got up at like can 1 in the morning. Please take over the bills and then we can have some fun. That's how that works. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. Say that one more time. No. What did she say? <laughs> so go ahead and take over those bills and she'll be fine. Hey, look, you give me what I want. The bills ain't got no problem. <laughs> you know what I want. That's some simping stuff right there. Bro, that's some simping stuff, bro. So she'll let you smash if you pay her bills. 
See, I thought she, I honestly thought she just had like high standards or she was just like, you know, just trying to be celibate and she wanted to get to know you before it did all that stuff. Bro, she just as mad, man, man. She, man, bro. She belong outside with, with them, bro. She just like the rest of them. And you just like the rest of them too, my nigga. You talking about you'll pay her bills, bro? If she gets you, give you some affection. And this is, y'all niggas be complaining about these females, bro. But y'all empower it with stuff like that. Y'all empower that type of behavior, bro. Your stuff about Kamala Harris, which, are you surprised about the amount of pickup that got? Uh, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> but not really, because I think people are a little shocked that someone like me, you know, from a group brand Nubian that they feel is pro-black, why would I come out in support of uh, Donald Trump or go against a, a Kamala Harris who they are trying to put up as a black woman mm. and I don't see it. Well, let me, let me, I'm going to play the, play the, first of all, the Barack Obama clip and then I'm going to play the clip that you said <laughs> in response to it. Let's play the two. And you're coming up with all kinds of reasons and excuses. I've got a problem with that. Because, because part of it makes me think, and I'm speaking to men directly, part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. Mm -hmm. And you're coming up with other alternatives and other reasons for it. And now I no. want to play the clip from Lord Jamar talking no. about that. No. Well, I feel that she's so bad that guess what? I might just go f around and vote for Trump. And this is my first time saying this out loud. But y'all <laughs> think you're going to shame somebody or bully a into voting for this? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Hey, it's like an insult of intelligence. Now I'm going to be, now you're going to make me be Mr. Anti. You keep coming at me with this bullshit. You keep coming at me talking about, oh, it's a shame that you're not supporting a black woman. And she's not black. Now, Mark, you know, <laughs> let me ask you honestly, Mark, if this had been the other way around, if this had been... Me... If it, hang, hang on, Jamal, uh, Lord Jamal, I'll come to you in a sec. I, I just want to get their reaction to what we've just played because it's gone viral, as I said. But, Mark, you know, if it had been the other way around, if you had a former white president saying... You've got to vote for Trump if you're white. You'd have gone absolutely nuts. So why is it OK for Barack Obama to order black people to vote for Kamala Harris, given how unpopular she currently is to the extent where Trump is ahead in five of the seven swing states? Why should they? So a couple of things. Uh, first, um, no one should vote for anybody based on identity politics. You should never vote for somebody because so Obama's they're wrong. black, right? So Obama. I, yeah, Obama's wrong. I mean, it's, I, didn't, I didn't vote for him. I, I mean, love that. Like, oh, Obama's wrong. Yeah, Obama's wrong. Uh, yeah, so um, we all agree. But I, but I, but I, but I, but, I, but no, we don't all agree though because I don't think though. <laughs> I, I think Obama's wrong for several reasons when that, in that video. But Obama's not arguing that you should vote for Kamala Harris because she's black. She, he's arguing. You the should vote thing. for them because you're black. In other words, oh. she best represents your interests. If I were running right, and if I, I, I'm, I'm a Green Party member, That's right? Not historically, what he was I saying. haven't voted Democrat. He was playing the race I, card. I, he was playing I, a skin color card. He was saying, if you are black, you have a duty to vote for the yes, black candidate. Yes. You don't. L listen, listen, As Lord again, Jamal rightly again, said to what in I'm his saying. furious rant about it, why, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, why should hold on, he be told okay, who to hold, vote for? No, okay, okay. Okay, first, first, first of all, Piers, again, you just said I'm <laughs> bringing in the race card when the question you asked me was, should Obama be telling no, people I to vote for Obama people because they're black? The race so card crazy. You. I said Obama did. He oh, then I misheard crazy. you. I apologize. Yeah. I apologize. I misheard you. My, I'm wrong. You're right. So to the point, um, <laughs> Obama is saying that black people, again, I disagree with him, but let's, let's, let's disagree with him for the right reason. He's saying that as black people, vote your interest. Don't reject this person. As a black person, you should vote for the person that uplifts the black community. That's her. And don't let your patriarchy, don't let your, your hatred of women, don't let your this, your this, your this, make you not do it. My issue with it is it, it frames black people and black men in particular as pathological and people who act against their interests and acts as if black men don't, also it's ahistorical. Black men actually do vote Democrat, I argue, more than they should. Man, he's speaking in circumlocution. He's just saying a whole bunch of words. He's frustrated. He's emotional. He doesn't have his, which 
clouds his logical reasoning. And he's like going all over the place. He's saying a bunch of, he's just saying a lot of words. Because Obama is so out of touch with the average black man of today, because he was, when he was running for president, everybody voted for him because he was a black man. Black women, black men voted for him because he was a black man. I think he thinks that the same reason that they voted for him eight years ago, 10 years ago, however long that ago that was, 16 years ago, I guess. He thinks that same reason that he got into office with the support of the black community just for simply being black. Because when Obama got in office, the black community supported him just because we wanted to see a black man as a president. We didn't care nothing about no policies back then. We want to see a black man as a president. He still think that's the same motivation with the black community to this day, and it's not. Well, maybe with the black women, because black women want to see a black woman leader. But black men, we don't, we already had our, we already seen it. We already had our black leader for eight years. So now the motivation is different. We're not going to vote. We're not going to give into identity politics like we did back when Obama was running. Now we're looking at policies. We're looking at Things for what it is and how the policies actually affect your life, the average American's life. A lot of black Americans ain't rocking with the things that Kamala is saying. A lot of black male Americans. So with that being said, Obama coming out there and trying to shame the black men and saying he's disappointed like he's somebody's daddy to grown men who you don't pay their bills. It's an, it's a, it's an insult. It's an it's a insult, a very, a very strong insult that that's why Lord Jamar feels like as pro-black as he is, he might vote for Trump just because you try to insult his intelligence. You try to, you, you, you disrespected him that much that he's literally going to go do the opposite. Do you think that we, we're that gullible? Like the fact that you can come out there and say those things to black men shows, how, to me, in my opinion, shows how you think about black men. You think that we just that gullible when we just, so it's almost like, all right, now let me show you how gullible I'm not. How about I just vote for Trump just because? Because, like, what you doing, bro? If you want to come at me in an intellectual way and, and talk to me intellectually and tell me the reason based on policies and based on things like that, why I should vote for Kamala, talk to me like that. But to try to shame me like you my daddy? What is that? I don't understand that. To me, it's a reflection of how he feels about the competence of an average black man. That's what I think. I could be wrong. I created scripted pranks. All my pranks were fake back in the day. TikTok is all fake, ain't shit real, none of it. Not the pregnancy reveals, not the hiding cameras, prank on their parents, all this shit. I'm sorry, kids. The entire internet is fake. I don't care if the world doesn't believe me, please believe me. Everything on the internet is fake. I know people who have like scripted divorce, breakups, recorded it, celebrated after. People who fake pregnancies for the views. All of it. They manipulate you. They get you vulnerable. But the hiding camera that is fake. I believe fake. I know people. That makes me ask the question. How I know you ain't trying to finesse right now. If you was faking back then and now admit it now because everybody else is, is fake and then they, they getting the same money you get now. How do we know that what you're saying now is even reputable? How do we even know now that you're not still trolling? Why, why should I believe you? If you was faking back then all those years. And lying to us all those years. You think I'm going to believe a liar today? The internet could be 100% fake when it comes to like vloggers. And he's talking about vloggers and those type of content creators and things like that. It could be fake. I don't know any vloggers. You know what I'm saying? But it's like at the same time, you could be, you probably feel he's probably mad because what was working for him, what used to work for him is not currently working for him. So now he's trying to make everybody, he's trying to use his credibility of being one of the first big time prank vlog channels to try to say everybody's doing that. And I'm pretty sure everybody not doing it. There gotta be some that's not, some that are, I don't know. But I don't believe liars. If you lied back then, why should I believe you now, bro? On the other hand, you should also be embarrassed to be in your late 30s with a family of your own and kids of your own and still crying because mommy and daddy won't give you an allowance. <laughs> You especially shouldn't be crying about it on the internet, even if anonymously. It's hard to imagine any scenario where it's appropriate to complain about your family on the internet. But if there is one, this certainly ain't it. And no matter the forum, whether on the internet or anywhere else, this is not the mentality that a grown adult should have. It's true that if you're working and struggling and your parents have literally millions of dollars stashed away, um, or even, just, even only, quote unquote, hundreds of thousands of dollars, they should help you. But 
you should not feel entitled right uh, entitled to their money that see that's the that's the uh, uh, dynamic here this is a lesson that I try to teach my own kids who are all under the age of 12 I certainly hope they'll have absorbed it by the time they're pushing 40 um, I'm blessed to be able to provide my kids with a wonderful life all kinds of luxuries that many kids across the world will never have but uh, they 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 shouldn't expect it or demand it or feel entitled to it. The moment they start making demands is the moment they start losing the wonderful things. My kids understand this because I've told them many times. I am required by law to feed them, clothe them, shelter them. Uh, I'm also morally obligated to provide these basic necessities. But everything beyond that is a luxury. Hmm. I provide some luxuries because I'm generous and I have the means they should accept those luxuries humbly and with a grateful heart. If they have any other attitude about it, they will lose those things. So here's a very small scale example, typical example for many parents. A few weeks ago, I was out running a few errands with my four-year-old. Uh, and and uh, we were at the store. We, we walked past at the store, the, the toy section. And she said, uh, Daddy, can I get a toy? Now, I was actually already planning on buying her a toy. It wasn't her birthday. There was no special occasion. I just felt like being generous. And, uh, and I thought it'd be a nice thing just to get her to just, just because. But I wasn't ready to buy the toy yet. You know, and that's because I was, still, I was still getting other things I needed. And so we're, we're gonna, if we're going to buy a toy, we're going to do it on my time, not hers. So I said, uh, we'll see. <laughs> now, normally my four-year-old's pretty patient by four-year-old standards, but she wasn't feeling patient on this day. So she started pouting. And I guess she was assuming that she wasn't actually going to get the toy or upset maybe that she wasn't getting it as quickly as she wanted. And then she said, the fa- she said the fatal words. She said, that's not fair. I want a toy. It's not fair. Oh, really? It's not fair that you aren't getting a toy the second you ask for it? So I, I owe you the toy, do I? Well, now you aren't getting it. I was going to buy you a toy, but now that you're demanding it, you're not going to get any toy at all. I'm happy to buy you a toy unless you, unless you think I owe you the toy, in which case I'll buy you nothing. And if you use the F word with me, fair, then there's nothing fair about buying you a toy. That's actually something I think about all the time. How could you teach? How could you be a rich person? Like if you didn't grow up rich and then you get to the point where you make so much money, you're a millionaire, these type of things. Then you have children, and your children didn't grow up the same struggles you. They didn't come from the trenches. They ain't, they ain't get it out the mud like you did. You know what I'm saying? They don't know what it's like to, you know, eat cereal without milk, and all you got in your pantry is just chips or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Beans, no rice, spaghetti, no sauce, just noodles. Like when your kids will never experience that level of lack or struggle. I don't want to say lack, but basically lack. How do you teach them to be appreciative when their whole entire life they've had comfortable everything? Nice house, beautiful carpet, big screen TV, movie room, multiple rooms for different things, basement, big backyard, dogs, just everything just beautiful. How do you teach them to appreciate anything when they've always had everything? And yeah, I hear you saying like, oh yeah, well, you can tell them no and make them earn things and things like that. Yeah. But you still, that still ain't negating the fact that they grew up in a mansion or they grew up in the most beautiful of the beautiful neighborhood. When you come from the trenches and you come from the hood or you come from situations where, you know, you walk outside and it's, it's dangerous outside and things like that changes how you process and think about the world around you. You be in survival mode. You're like, man, I got to get out of here. And your brain work different being in that type of situation, trying to get out than someone who's already comfortable and have they have all the food they can possibly want, all the snacks they could possibly want. You know what I'm saying? All the electronic devices they could possibly want. I don't know. I always wondered that. If you leave an inheritance to your children, will they, how do you get them to appreciate what you've worked so hard for? Lucky to meet Dan. Dan is from New York and he's so embarrassed by the way <laughs> his friend Charlotte looks that he makes her walk 10 steps in front of pressing. him when they go out together in public. Dan, that sounds absolutely ridiculous to me. But she dresses too sleazy for her size. <laughs> for her, I'm sorry. She, she, she dresses she, too she, sleazy she, for her she, size? She exposes herself, uh-huh. you know, all over. It's like she buys her, her clothes. That's a before cancel small. culture. What's a typical outfit That's for her? That's before cancel culture, A cat bro. suit. A cat? With, you can call somebody chest. fat without even... 
out. That's a big chest. <laughs> All over. Yeah. I mean, it's like. <laughs> yeah. Out. And then, you know, she wears these little jackets with zippers that she never zips up or close up. And she just leaves them here, and then, you know, she's. Okay. Trying to get what everything like, in. Yeah. Woo! Oh, yeah. Bad. See, and that's why she does it. She likes the attention. Oh, so she wants men to yeah, react she, that she, way. Yeah, she wants that. But she what's wrong that. with that? Don't complain when they do it. She complains about it? Sometimes. Yeah, you How get attention. Why are they staring at me? You have your chest hanging out. <laughs> what do you but expect? Dad, Let me ask to this day, to make your friend thing. walk 10 feet in front of you, why can't you just be proud that, hey, this is my no, friend, and that's how she I'm, wants to look? I'm proud. She can, she can look sexy uh -huh. or appealing mm -hmm. without you know, overdoing it. All right. Overdoing well, I'd like to much. see what she's overdoing, wouldn't you? <laughs> Charlotte, come on out. She's kind of conservative. And that's conceived. That day. Yeah. <laughs> look. Your moms look good. Your moms look mad good, Joe. No, I'm his friend. That ain't my mother, though. Oh, that's your friend? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you could be my friend. <laughs> Me and you could be mad cool now. But hey, yo, T, T. All right, and I say you walking around with her. This is concealed for her. This is tame. Oh. Uh huh. Now you walking in the mall with her. Every guy that walks by is like, oh shoot, yo, look at her, look at that. Oh, she got all that out. And then she's and pulling the pants up, trying to get everything to fit in it. Then you're gonna want to fight. Well, Charlotte, how do you feel about Dan's reaction? It hurts because he's my friend and I expect better. You know, I get a lot from society, but, you know, I expect my friend to, you know, to treat be my you better. Oh, yeah. cut it out. That's not too much to expect. No. Like, we go to the mall and, um, like, I'll be walking with him. He'll say, keep going, keep going. So I said, you know, Dan, what's wrong? Keep going. So I'm like, God. I, I, you know, I think, I, I think he's about to save me or something. I'm going to fall. So I keep walking. He was going to stop to a friend. So you wanted me to keep going so the friend didn't see him with me oh, and wow. say, what's he mine? That's crazy. That's yeah. Right. He's just looking for you, though. Keep, and keep making suppose, me keep going. Suppose you're walking That's somewhere crazy. by yourself. You're not always with somebody. But you're let's talk about when she like is this. with you, Dan. Why do you feel so embarrassed that you can't? Be yeah, proud that's, that's she's crazy. your friend. Because it's too sleazy. But she looks no. good. It's but too Dan, sleazy. can't you just get And like over I said, it? this here is tame yeah. for her. She dresses worse than this. Now, let me tell you something. Believe me. Well, Dan had a party. Dan had a party. Everybody knew about it. And a friend mentioned to me that Dan was having a party. So, I mean, that Dan had had a party. I missed it because he didn't tell me. Because he said oh. that I would have worn something ridiculous and been all exposed. So I found out after. What kind of party was this? It was a birthday party. His everyone, birthday party? Everyone knew but me. You didn't invite her to your mm -hmm. birthday party? He said I wasn't going to no, wear I'm clothes shame. and I was going to be all hanging I'm out. Shame. So I didn't know. Dan. I'm shamed. Dan, why, why would you do He's that? He's out No. <laughs> 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 I don't worry about that. I don't worry about uh -uh, the bulls. Shame on you. Listen, it was gonna be drinking there. So she's out of control <laughs> from the beginning. When she she throw a few back, but let me ask she's on every guy. Oh look! Do you edit oh, you like should have seen her in a limo coming out here. Where's my Vaseline? <laughs> She got to lotion them up. What's up with that? You know, I got mixed emotions about this because on one side, I was like, man, nah, she just doing too much and stuff like that. On the other end, I'm hearing what he's saying, but it's like, bro, if she dresses too sleazy for you and y'all don't agree, y'all not, then why are you her friend in the first place? Obviously, she don't believe the same thing you believe. Obviously, she's not going to stop being sleazy. Obviously, she's not going to stop embarrassing you like that. So why do you even go through the motions even going out in public with her? Why is she not this type of friend that, okay, you know that in public, she's going to be embarrassing. She's going to be wanting a lot of attention from a lot of dudes. Just don't go in public with her, bro. And if she has a problem with the fact that you don't want to be in public with her, like, you know, because sometimes somebody's a good person. Somebody's enjoyable to be around. But if they're like, they don't know how to conduct themselves in public. 
Like, imagine, like, somebody that you really enjoy being around, but when y'all in public, they just super loud. Like, they don't know how to have, like, a... They don't know how to, like, lower their voice. And, like, they just super loud. They tell all your... Every conversation you have with them, everybody hear all your business. It's like, listen, bro, or sis, I really love you. I love being around you as a person or anything like that. But when we out in public, can't do it. Because you don't know how to be in public. Or I'm not willing to be in public and draw that type of attention to myself. I just, I, I ain't rocking with it. And if they have two options, either they can continue being your, your friend and, and understand you and, you know, y'all don't go in public together. Or they could just stop being your friend. But for him to be begging her and stuff, she not going to stop. Obviously, look at the smirk on her face. She likes the attention for whatever reason. So I came across this video of a woman and her alleged sugar daddy husband. I don't know what he is. All I know is he a lot older than her. So I went to the comment section per usual to see what are the women going to say? Because I'm very interested in what people got to say about certain things. She said she put her phone down, stood up and gave her a round of applause. Now, mind you, I don't care about her standing up and giving a woman a round of applause. I honestly do not care. But it's almost like a certain community when they come out and then and they, they let everybody know that they came out the closet. It's like, you don't need everybody else's approval. You, you you don't have to tell everybody you came out the closet. And I feel like it's the same thing for something like this. It's like, she is dating a man who most likely got a lot of money. And she wants the world to know that, sis, this is the way to do it. <laughs> Another woman right here says she says she might do the same thing. She's tired of struggling. And the brother saying, that's crazy. I'm assuming to any request that she has for whatever she want to do. Like, I guess go to Dubai or something like that. <laughs> Another woman said, I know he got a yacht. You ain't wrong, friend. If you want to date an old white guy that's a millionaire with a lot of money, go do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm happy for you because you look happy. But if the roles were reversed, and I know we hear it all the time, and it was a younger black guy, black man, dating an older white woman with a lot of money, sleeping on her couch, she paying for everything, she taking him, you know, buying him anything he want, PS5, any game he want and stuff like that. Y'all will call that man all types of bum. And that's the funniest thing about it. <laughs> Have a nice day. What up, though? Oh, no. Who you looking at? I don't know, but oh, no. Swipe left for both. Ooh. Oh, what up, though? Ain't what up, though? You don't like that? No, ma'am. I'm I sorry. I don't give a fuck. How you doing today? Hey. How you feeling? I'm chilling. All right. You all right? Yeah, because he told y'all to go left. I'm saying. But you ain't even talk to us yet, though. I'll just say go to the right. I know, but you won't, you can't say what he say. You gotta just go off of what you say. I'm saying something different. He said something different. I ain't going left. Well, beat him up. I don't want to fight him. He got some for you. You cute? Nah, I ain't got that for her. She too cute for me to be talking about having that for her. So why you say go left? You came up what up though? That's how I talk. I ain't gonna change for you. You okay? You change it for me? Yeah, I'll try to be a gentleman for you. Oh, well, I ain't no lady. And you smack your lip. You ain't no lady. Mm -mm. And you can't say that in this day and age. That, you know, they're they, they going to take that literally. She came out talking about some what up, though. That's actually an example of how dudes be end up with a baby mother. You know, she cute and everything like that. But like, you know, she, she's, you know, she either already a baby mother or she going to be a baby mother. That's the prototype right there. There's no way in the world she's going to be a sustainable wife with a relationship that lasts 30 to 40 years. So I'd be surprised if any relationship she has lasts three months. And I'm not saying she can't, but she has to change. You get to buy one more balloon, China. Oh, okay. Okay. I ain't got no kids. I ain't got no kids. Yo, I think we just found our first. Hold up. Well, hold up. Come up here, China. Come up here. Amy, come up here, Mark. He's too, man. Do you want to ask her any questions before you say yes or no? Yes. Okay. How do you pay your bills? Oh, I said. Oh, shit. Hold on, China. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go back, go back, go back. Huh. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh. I don't know what's Okay, going boom. On. Okay, so listen. You ain't get to find no love today, China. You yeah. hear me? That's all right, but you we're gonna have another chance. You yeah. hear me? You ain't get to Thank find you. no love today. That's I appreciate okay. you, Thanks. baby. <laughs> That's why she doesn't like big pee pee. Popped the balloon in the worst neighborhood in Philly. And she was honest about it too. I don't know why I expected anything different. I mean, look what she wearing. 
it's like nighttime. It's like two in the morning or 12. And I don't know what time it is over there. And they got a pop the balloon challenge and pretty much everybody in their pajamas outside in the hood on the street. And she said that's how she make a living. I would not want to be that close to her while she talking. Because that breath probably smelled like straight peen. I'm just being real, bro. Multiple peen. And I ain't talking about pina colada. Homie, re homie respectfully said no and popped the balloon. Feels like a lot of tension. Man, kinda, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're waiting kinda, for the moment. You know the person's waiting. To ring is that. Cage is that. It's not well, again, cross landed. Looks like a good amount of studying right now. Well, like when she throws, she connects. Pereira, a huge favorite with our token holders. You see on the screen there, 82% of them think she's going to be victory. Oh, oh, wow. 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 She had the big left hook and Begley stepped straight on that's the That's the sister of Pereira. That's the sister of Pereira. Nice. I don't even know how to say his name. Boom, he's a money. beast UFC fighter. She just hugged him. I guess precision runs in the family, huh? Ooh, wow. Oh, she hit she hard 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 the push. Yeah. Dang, she If we get a close-up shot of Dee Begley's face here, she is. Yeah, that's a brother right there. She may have broken nose. A lot of blood coming from the face here. Very good at controlling the distance. You know, I know women usually want to do everything that men want to do, but like fighting is one of them things that's like, like why, why do you want to do that? Why do y'all want to do that to yourselves? Like, what makes us want to fight is the testosterone. You know what I'm saying? It's like our testosterone drives us to play sports like football and, and get into boxing and get into boxing and things like that and doing those type of things. I remember Jordan Peterson was talking about it one time, like, we are biologically attracted to things like that. That's like, I don't know, high risk, high reward type things that might be painful, may not. You know what I'm saying? But as a woman, why? What do you have to prove? Like, why do you want to get clocked like that? The possibility and have your nose all, ble all bloody. Don't nobody want to see their mama like that. I don't know. She's probably already a mother or will be a mother one day. Don't nobody want to see their mother get clocked like that? Nose bleeding all over the place. It's, you know, you see your dad like that. It's like, yeah, dad, you was a warrior. Okay. You know what I mean? But your mom? Don't, don't nobody want to see their mom like that? I'm just saying, bro. It's just, I understand that y'all want to do that. But why? The question is why? Promiscuous women are promiscuous because they are unable to form an actual bond of emotional intimacy with a man. A new man gives them a rush of validation, which temporarily fills the void. The newness wears off and they're left feeling empty again. And the cycle repeats itself and she finds yet another man. Eventually this takes a heavy emotional toll on a woman. And as she gets older, her options for quality men diminishes, so she starts to seek out men for security. Now when she dates, for the first few weeks the sex is enthusiastic and her emotional instability doesn't show itself because of course it's new. The woman is in a phase of pseudo intimacy. Then the novelty wears off, her desire for the man crashes, and her emotional instability shows up. This is normally where her relationships end but now she's desperate for security so she digs in and tries to make this one last and this is what traps men her need for security is very sincere and that sincerity clouds the man's judgment even as red flags are popping up all over the place her need for security though is like hunger when you're really hungry all you can think about is food. Once your belly is full though, more food is actually repulsive. And so it is with security for the promiscuous woman. Once she has it, she takes it for granted and actually begins to resent the man giving her the security. He summed that up so well, but the only thing I wish is that he would explain why the promiscuous woman who doesn't have the ability to emotionally connect with a man, I wish he would explain like what causes that. He may not know the answer, he, he may not, but he did explain the reasons that I also believe why a promiscuous woman is so unstable and, you know, why you can't turn her into a housewife. But I'd really wish he would have just explained the psychology on what causes that disconnect with that type of woman to be so promiscuous. Like, why isn't she able to connect like other women, which is, we would 
think is the nature of women is to connect on that level. Most women can connect on that level. So why don't they have the ability to really do so? Or why, I don't say the ability to do so. They, they may have the ability. But why is it difficult for them to have that emotional connection with a, a, a guy? That's a good question. What? Cybertruck versus Lambo? That that Cybertruck better not win. And he and he got his he got his windows and everybody see him. If he moves in that Lambo. No. The cyber The Cybertruck won. Bro. The Cybertruck beat a Lamborghini. The Cybertruck won against a Lamborghini, bro. What? That was embarrassing, bro. Big old Cybertruck won against a Lambo, bro. I wish they had like a farther, farther straightaway because they would just went to the red light. Dang. I'm surprised that'd be a Lambo. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lie.